Today we're going to be talking about a different kind of essay called a response to literature. So instead of writing something that is persuasive or we're trying to convince someone of something, uh, we are going to be writing something in response to a piece of literature that we've read. Um, in this case, it'll be a poem, and there are a couple of different things that we have to do when we are writing an essay about a piece of literature. So basically, with a response to literature essay, you are going to be writing about the piece of literature that you've read. For example, you would read a poem, and you might talk about the theme of the poem, the message of the poem, why the author wrote the poem, and then you will also talk about literary devices that the author used in this particular poem. So you might talk about um, if they had a rhyme scheme, you might talk about if they had a refrain or if they used repetition. You'll also go on to talk about if the author used any figurative language to help to convey the meaning of the poem. Did they use metaphors, similes, personification, etc.? So when you have a response to literature essay, you are going to have a prompt that you are going to have to follow very, very carefully. And response to literature essays can be a little bit tricky because of the amount of different things that you can do with them. They're a little bit general. So you want to make sure that you really understand the prompt because sometimes the prompts aren't that specific and you have to look for specific things in the prompt. Uh, when you take iStep, you might see response to literature, essay questions on there, and the prompt is so important and it's really going to help you to set up your essay and to develop those paragraphs in an organized way. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is to just read the prompt very carefully. Sometimes you might have to read it more than once to really get a good idea of what the prompt is telling you to do. The second thing that you want to do is make sure that you answer all parts of the prompt. You might see in a response to literature essay multiple questions that you have to answer, so make sure that you do answer all of those. And what you want to do is when you see all of those different questions in your prompt, you really want to make sure that you're using those questions and turning each one of those questions into its own pair. Because with those response to literature essays, they are very general and you really need to focus it and make sure that you have things to talk about in each paragraph of your essay. So we're going to take a look at a sample response to literature prompt. Earlier in class today, you should have taken a look at uh, two poems during a poetry compare and contrast. This prompt is based on those two poems that you read in class earlier today. So the prompt says, you have read two poems about dreams. Write an essay comparing how both speakers respond to the idea of dreams in both poems. So that's a pretty broad question. So they're just basically asking you, what did each one of the poets say about dreams in their poems? Well, that's really general, and you're going to have to look at each one of these bullet points um, that are at the bottom in order to really understand how to set up your essay. So anytime you see a response to literature prompt, you're going to see your big question, what I just read to you that you see in italics on your screen. Um, you also really, really need to pay attention to the bullet points that are going to be underneath the prompt because that is going to tell you exactly how you're going to need to set up your essay. So it says be to include, so you need to make sure that you do those things. The first thing that I have in blue there is so important. It says an explanation of both speakers' points of view. So what that's saying is that you need to talk about how each speaker of the poem feels about dreams. Then you need to move on in the next part in blue. You have to give an explanation of how each poem uses, and it says language, so figurative language or literary devices, to convey each speaker's thoughts. So you have all that's kind of going on. You have to talk about how each poet feels about dreams, and then you have to talk about how each poet uses figurative language or literary devices to explain their thoughts about dreams. And on the next slide, we're going to take a look at how to actually break those things apart to turn those into paragraphs. The last bullet point there just reminds you that you need to have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. So that means that you have to start with a full introduction. You'll have to develop a thesis statement, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in class tomorrow. You are going to have to have a full body section of your essay, so you're going to need to have three body paragraphs, and you're going to need a conclusion as well. 
So we are going to take a look at that sample prompt and we're going to kind of put together a really rough outline of how you would approach uh, setting up an essay like this. So the very first thing that you are going to do is you're always going to start with your introduction no matter what. After your introduction, your second paragraph is going to be body paragraph one. And when you are structuring your body paragraphs, you really want to pay attention to those bullet points that were listed underneath your prompt on the previous slide. So what you are going to need to do for this one is you are going to have to have your first body paragraph talk about the first poem that you read. Because if you go back to those bullet points, it talks about how they want to know how each poet felt about dreams. So in body paragraph one is going to be all that first poem. You're going to talk about what that poem was about, what messages were conveyed, and you're going to talk about the figurative language that the poet used to get his message across. Once you do that, you have your first body paragraph. And then that makes the second body paragraph pretty easy because you're going to do the same thing, but you're going to do it for poem two. So in body paragraph two, you will have um, the whole paragraph where you're going to talk about the second poem, what it was about, the theme, the message that the poet was trying to convey, and then how that poet uses figurative language to describe those things. Now, in body paragraph three, you're gonna talk about how both of those poems have similarities and differences. So in body paragraph three, you're gonna talk about those two poems together. You might talk about how one poet has a different viewpoint on dreams than the other, how they might use different figurative language to get those uh, meanings across. So in body paragraph one, you're going to talk about first poem. Body paragraph two, you talk about the second poem. Body paragraph three, you talk about both of them together and you compare and contrast. And then in paragraph five, you'll always end with your conclusion. So when you see these response to literature essays, you are first going to have to read what you have been given very carefully, especially if it's I stop or if we're doing something in class for a big grade. You want to make sure that you really take the time to read the poem very carefully. Um, most of these response to literature things that you might see are going to be a compare and contrast. So you want to make sure that you are doing a really nice job with your compare and contrast and that you have enough information so that you can actually craft a five paragraph essay. The first thing that you need to do, make sure again, read each poem very carefully. And I really want you to treat each poem as its own and I want you to do a really good close reading for each poem. So that means you want to underline and find all of that figurative language because that's going to be so essential when you put together your essay. You want to make sure that you do a really good job putting things into your own words as well so that you have a clear idea of what the theme or the author's message is for each poem. So once you have done those things, you really want to take a look at them side by side, see what you notice. You can highlight similarities in the poems, highlight differences. Maybe one poet uses a metaphor to explain things where another one might use a lot of imagery. Take a look at the message of the poems. See if there's any similarities. Maybe the topic is the same, but the authors feel differently about the topic. So you really want to make sure that you put the effort into that close reading. Get all the information out of those poems that you can. Find a theme, find a message, find all the figurative language and then look at them side by side and really see what's similar and what's different. And sometimes doing the close reading is one of the hardest parts because you need to pull as much as you can from those poems in order to be able to write your essay. So this is just a really quick list of things that you can look at when you're doing a compare and contrast. You can compare and contrast the rhyme scheme. Maybe the rhymes, there's a rhyme scheme in one poem but not the other and one poet is trying to draw attention to specific words so he makes them rhyme. You can take a look at refrains. Maybe you have a poet that is repeating something for effect because he wants to draw the reader's attention to those words and the other poem does it. Those are some things that you can take a look at. Again, you can take a look at all that figurative language, how the authors use metaphor, similes, personification in different ways. And then lastly, Take a look at the themes, the messages, or important ideas presented in poems. You might have two poems that you're reading that are about dreams, but the poets might feel completely differently about those dreams. Or you might read two poems about uh, things that are occurring in nature. 
And even though both poems are about nature, they have a completely different approach or a completely different message at the end of them. So you're going to really need to think about what each poet is saying. So for tomorrow, you need to make sure that you have your poetry compare and contrast done. We are going to revisit some of these things from the video tomorrow in class, and then we're going to take a look at some sample response to literature essays and talk about how to come up with a thesis statement for this type of essay. So if you're feeling a little bit confused and like you don't know what to do, that's totally fine because we're going to go through everything in more detail in class tomorrow. Thanks, guys.